I say that all the time. That's one of the last things she Now I'm a little under the weather today, so Julie's going to do, be doing most of the talking. Julie, why don't you tell us some of the things going on in the future, and then we're going to introduce our fabulous guests. Well, first, I'd like to give a big thank you to our host here, the Palace Theater and Art Bar. Cheers! We're very excited to announce that they now have a full bar which is awesome, and of course, everybody's partaking of that full bar. Uh, we do have uh, featured drinks tonight uh, based on our special guests here. All the Negronis are all based on Almost Live. They all have Almost Live themes. And Katie Phoenix, a speedy recovery. We have two men down, two men, one man, one woman down this weekend, but we wish them health, good health, get better. I uh, want to also thank our Stranger Ticket giveaway winner, Leah Bowd, and her guest for winning the Stranger Ticket table. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And for the Stranger, who is our sponsor, we want to say that the Food and Drink Guide is on stands everywhere right now. Tomorrow, there will be a copy of their annual FIFF Notes Guide for the Seattle International Film Festival, so make sure to pick that up on stands. Mm -hmm. Uh, we also want to, really quickly before we dive into today, want to give out uh, information on our next show, which is June 4th, Tuesday, first Tuesday of the month. We will have Magic the Gathering trading card game artists. So yes. We're going to have three talkers. That's the show. Yeah, that's, that's the show. That's, that's, yeah. that's, the good one. that's, that's the good going to be uh, old school. Um, old school artist Drew Tucker and the original art director Jesper Meerforce. And we also have Tyler Jacobson, another. Right Hot shot, star. yep. Yes. He's amazing. Yeah, he's wonderful. Um, so, moving on into what everyone's Julie, here for. I want to introduce these wonderful guests that we have. Okay, so, Where? let me take everyone back in time. <laughs> so, in 19 1984, you scroll back, yes. there is this little show that started up. <laughs> back when TV only had 13 channels. <laughs> There was a show that started up locally called Almost Live. At that time, it was hosted by a Ross Schaefer. Mm -hmm. There was a young man from, I believe, The Rocket who came on board, joined the group, and in 1988, took over as host, at least for a season, but he stayed on board, and from there, what we now know as Almost Live, that went on from, I think, Sunday to Saturday night, correct? Right, yep. that's right. Uh, up through 1999 was born. Uh, tonight we have five. We have five, sure, five, five members of that original cast, and I'm going to introduce them from my side all the way to the end. We have Tracy Conway. regular segment. We also always, always hear about the lame list, but there are ones that everybody loves to bring up. Everything from high five with white guys, the worst girlfriend in the world, mm -hmm. Very good. the me show, uh, cops everywhere. <laughs> uh, and uh, what else? Oh, Billy Kwan. My yeah. manners. Got to bring that up. Speedwalker. Thank you, Bill. And uh, Street Talk, Sluggy. 
Oh, that's my favorite. Yes, I have Sluggy Sluggy. Yes. Yes. Really? Oh, hands down. Oh, yeah. I actually have a Sluggy in my car. Oh, I really do. Uh, cool. Urban wildlife, um, and also the the Pike and Pine Quiz Show. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Ever, that was ever. pretty brilliant. And the silly Scandinavians in Ballard. That was kind of. But one of the things that everybody asks, and we want to know too, and, and we'll just let you take over, is from the very concept of a sketch or a character, what was the process? When you guys got together, did you show up like Monday together? How did you guys meet and get did... started? What's the legend? Of all hmm. that? You should start with that, John. Uh, well, you know, when. Um, <clears throat> Ross and uh, Ross was, I think, the third host uh, that was. Well, there was a, there was a. Uh, they wanted to do something called um, Rainy Day Gazette. Well, and that was they, one. Rainy Day Gazette. Rainy yes. Gazette. Oh, yeah. They did really. They did that's three, really. There was big. one called Take Five. Take Five. Oh, Take five. They did three pilots for a show that was supposed to go on what they called the Family Hour that NBC gave back. All the networks were forced to give back. Uh, the seven to eight o'clock hour, which that's when network programming went on. So that was for local programming, so that you could do it for your own community and make you know money for the local stations. But everybody ended up. That's when syndication took off. So yeah. uh, they wanted to do something that was going to be five days a week. So the then program director Bob um, Jones. Jones. Jones, thank you. I was going to say Smith. Bob yeah, Jones. Uh, yeah. He <laughs> wanted to do something that was. Uh, Local and had a little live studio audience, so they did some several pilots. Uh, right. One was like a beat the clock show and stuff. But anyway, and I, yeah. And I, I'd, I'd, I'd yeah. been on, I was on the air at the time doing these segments on a show called Rev, which stood yeah. for Rock Entertainment <laughs> Video. <laughs> and, uh, and I did a thing called the Rocket Report because I was working at the Rocket Magazine. Right. And uh, the stuff that I was doing was a, like a two-minute segment about the local music scene, and I was throwing in some comedy stuff and. And uh, when they were starting to work on the show, they were like, well, hey, maybe you could contribute to the show. And at first they were like, man, I don't know. This guy, what, you know, I don't know. But then uh, Ross is one of these, he's a, Ross was a football player. And it's right. significant because in, in a sports, if you come from a sports paradigm, you are, you're sort of a little standoffish as to, you know, who is this guy who can, you know, but if you prove if you can make the team, then he get he gets they they get right behind you. And so as soon as I could prove that I got last, he was very supportive. Whereas a lot of times people are just sort of like they try to help out the new person, like and, and make it real easy for them. And then at a certain point they're like, "You're not working out. Get out of here!" And it, it comes as a shock. But but they both Ross and and the Jim Sharp, who was the head writer at the time. We both sort of came from sort of a sports paradigm. It's mm -hmm. like if you could prove yourself, they were they got they got right behind me very quickly. Mm -hmm. What do you think? What do you think your first sketch was that really defined yeah. you? Uh, the first sketch that I did that uh, uh, well, actually, the very first one was one that they were like they, it really deepened their doubts about what, <laughs> what I could do, right which was there had been this uh, this uh, thing on Gasworks. The Gasworks Park, big surprise, the uh, ground was, they did some testing and they found that in the children's play areas it was like horribly toxic, you know, and like there's all these dioxins and crazy <laughs> stuff. So, so they yes, put up does. these That's big signs, yeah. there were these huge signs that said, do not eat the dirt. <laughs> yeah, and so, People eat dirt all the time. Yeah, you know, yeah right? don't eat the dirt. And, <laughs> the I, and I actually <laughs> talked to the, uh, the parks department and they said, well, people actually, you know, I was like, what? You know, and, and uh, so I. The first thing I do when I go to a park, man, the first yeah, thing. Yeah, no, I, no. I got yeah. a special spoon. That's how you know. So I, so I did a thing about. I, we got a bunch of chocolate frosting, you know, canned frosting, and I was like, Funny. and I, I went down and I scooped, you know, some of this sludgy dirt that was in the play area, and then cut, and then we, then I put chocolate frosting in and started eating it, saying, no, really eat the dirt, your children will gain immunities and will be strong, will be stronger people, and they were like, what is this, you're eating dirt, what is that? They were screeching tires in the back. Yeah, and they are like, no, don't do that, but then the next one I did was, that they had just started another one, signs. They had just started putting those signs on dumpsters that said, do not play in or yes, around. I this. Yeah. And uh, so I got in a dumpster with a Monopoly board. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I was playing and I was doing all this stuff. Oh, yeah. 
And I had a friend, we pushed it down like, like a demolition derby, and we were like playing in this thing. And they liked that one. This is Assignment Danger. Yeah, it was, got, we, I came up with a thing called, uh, the, the segment was called Assignment Danger. And the band would always step on the first, like, yes, they would. 30 seconds of the thing. <laughs> yes, they would. Because yeah. they could not cut off the dun, 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 dun. And then we'd be, they'd start rolling. Hello, this is a dun, 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 dun. dun. <laughs> so, so we learned that we had to pad it for, like, 30 seconds so that right. these they guys in the band. Music, who, right. And there was one time I asked them, like, hey, you know what would be really funny when I was the host? Uh, like, if I just pointed to the uh, the guitar player who was sort of like... Oh, the, Layla. wasn't really the leader of the band, but he kind of was yeah. the main... Yeah. Oh, okay. He was like the front man, and I said, Hey, uh, why don't, like, here's a really funny thing. I'll just go, Layla, and I'll point to you and just do that opening guitar. Oh, riff. God, yeah. Right. And uh, so, so he's like, yeah. And so then I go, like, I, we go to the show, and it's like... And I'm like, so anyway, what I was thinking, Layla, I mean, and, and instead of him doing the opening guitar riff, the entire band felt bad that they weren't going to be included, so it was the entire, like this whole, like, and I was like. No, they actually started like this when you said, Layla, they go, one, three. Two, three. <laughs> that's no, like, no, no, yeah. That's not the time. I'm like, yeah, the entire band. And I'm looking and I'm like, what the, you know, what are you doing? This is, a stronger you know, yeah. so, you know, what are you doing? You know, I just wanted to, but no, no, so. Anyway. Did, so, the, did the dirt thing um, make it on the air? It eventually. I did eventually. Yeah, eventually. they had it. Eventually. They had it loaded. Oh, by seven. the way, yeah. um, I I, I uh, had to be. In, I was in the audience. Like I, they wouldn't let me. On, on like, the very I first show, you were in the audience. I would and then I, I would do, take cutaways if you are. Yeah, I would do the stuff and I I give it to them, but they. Uh, and so I actually had to be. I was in the audience. <laughs> For the first four or watching five shows, bit. watching my own bit, you know, oh, from the audience. Laughing hilariously. Then eventually they're like, weird. "Well, oh, all right, all right." We'll let this thing on the air. Yeah. yeah, all right. So, how did you get all these? Did you know these guys before? See, I they was got convinced on? that you guys were in some kind of comedy troupe. Yeah, we were all in the Groundlings. But <laughs> they lived in a house together. Yeah. Well, Steve, okay, it was so a bad house. You know? <laughs> no, <laughs> Steve, Steve, and. and uh, uh, I started, Tracy worked it. They worked well, it. Yeah, they were I started working. at King in '77, oh, okay. and so it wasn't well, until I was a temp person. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Steve's yeah. entire career, for the, well, up till whatever, up till the show was here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, wow, forever. Yeah. So, but I wasn't. They, they came along. Almost like came along, and uh, they started looking in '84. We were there in '85, right? '84. September '84. Okay, September '84. So '84. They wanted this show, and by that time I was already a producer director. So you know. I, at the, at what, how old were you? Twelve. Uh, eight, <laughs> uh, twelve, something like that. Uh, yeah, and I knew like yes. crazy young. I knew yeah. Joe, Nancy's husband, and right. he, he joined. And he just like, well, can my girlfriend be in because she? You know, oh, so it's like Sue and Matt. Oh, she like, yeah, yeah. Okay. Stevie yeah. Nicks comes in. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I was like, Total well, nepotism. Well, absolutely. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, can we pay her? And I'm like, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so. And then Tracy was working. Uh, you said as a temp, yeah. and her. Oh, your, your debut was the Great Space debut. Needle April Fool's. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, I remember that. Yes. Yeah. 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 I think actually that Joe and Nancy came in and asked me to do a different sketch. Was it called Maturity or Stupidity? Oh, yeah, but you probably couldn't oh, do God. it. But it hadn't, it hadn't aired yet. And then they came and got me because I was an unknown face, but they found out I was a trained actor because I'm a trained actor. That's right. And uh, right, they found out that, oh, I think she can actually say this line and look like she's oh, upset. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Uh, I, most of you now hear the story of the Space Needle, but one of the things that really kicked it over was that people who were watching, it was the very opening of the show, mm -hmm. the opening credits, and it got, you know, we it interrupted little, It this. was April Fool's Day. Yeah, it was April right, Fool's Day. Right, right. yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Live show, live show. Live. Yeah, this yeah. is legendary. Yeah, and I'll let other people tell this. My part of it was that I was supposed to be the witness on the street that actually saw it go over. So I was being coached. I got two takes, and the first one was, I think the line was just basically, I was looking up, and it just looked like it was swaying, and then it was like the bottom got kicked out from under me, and I was just like, hey, it was just terrible, you know? So my, my actual training, you know, I didn't want to overplay it, I didn't want to overact it, so I was being kind of subtle. So very encouraged, oh, that was good, we got that, that's good. Can you, okay, you just bump it up a little bit, a little more energy, you know, so then I, did the second one where it was a little more hysterical, and 
that's the one they use. And it just really convinced a lot of people that sure did. that did not see the yeah. bug that said yeah. April 1st, yeah. 1989. It was that indeed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. April Fool's. So was, people went nuts. Steve, were you, did you volunteer to have to apologize? Mark, I need that? a drink. I, I, that was yeah, the, the space deal that I heard. Oh, no, the, 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 the uh, station <laughs> made John oh, they made go John on the air the next week yeah. and apologize. Yeah. It's yeah. like the War of the Worlds. The yeah. basic yeah. concept, we should let everyone know, the basic thing was the opening of the show was interrupted, right? right. And it was like, we interrupt this uh, program to be in the following special report. And we, we hired a guy that was not a cast member, he was an actor, so he played a reporter. So no one knew who he was. So he's like, oh, we, we, you know, the space needle has fallen. And so then we cut to like, Tracy, and she's on the, on the street, and like, oh, I was there, I, was just, I saw it, it was falling, oh, it was horrible. So it looked real, because it wasn't any of the people that were the cast yeah. people. We had a, 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 graphic, brand new a graphics, graphics department, right. brand right. new graphics department, brand new paint box, which is, yeah. you know, now is antique, but they, yeah. the guy, I went and said, hey, we got a, a, a space needle, look like it falls over, and, um, and it, yeah, Kelly it looked, was it, his name, and he, he, he gave us he two made pictures. made an art piece, two, right. Pieces right. of artwork that looked like it had fallen over. Right. It was just like we're stills, you know. It was like yeah. cut to that, cut to that, you know, just like a news report. Now it's all like, what a wonderful thing, you know. It's like thirty years later, like, isn't this a great legacy of the? At the time, it wasn't very fun. Well, but we are. You know, I bet you, if you guys did it again. Wouldn't work. Oh, we'd be well. We well, we can't time. because 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 we, of we, us, there's we, actually federal law on the books. Yeah. Oh, I mean, no. it's, 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 tell that. No, it's because of because of us. You cannot make a hoax that puts uh, uh, life or property at, at, at risk, and that's specifically because of us. Because when we left the show that night, when we were done, we were leaving the building. The front desk, the lights. It actually the happened phone. during the first break. Okay, so 911 got shut down. Yeah. yeah in all of Western Washington, we shut down the entire 911 emergency system. Yeah. And then, and Cheers. Also, yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah, so because of that, we apologized. And now, we were asked to apologize on a weekly basis. You know, yeah. I was the producer. I would get calls every Tuesday. We worked Tuesday through Saturday. I would get calls every Tuesday by somebody who was offended by some stupid thing. And, and we, we never would apologize, except for the space needle thing. We had, since we shut down yeah. half of an entire state's emergency system, we actually put yeah. lives in danger. So we apologized. So John uh, taped an apology. John, you, last year, you know, last week we did something very, very <laughs> bad. We're very, very shy. We won't do it again. Yeah. But then when we brought there the audience in, stuff. when we brought the audience in, my instructions were, don't show them that. I mean, we'll yeah. we'll play it back, but we won't yeah. let the studio audience see the apology because that's. Puts a little it's black cloud. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah. a bit of a downer to start the show. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. no. yeah where was you guys' studio at the time? Yeah. Okay. 333 oh, Dexter. 333 Glittering Dexter, Dexter Avenue. Yeah. Yeah. Which is now which is now a 12 story apartment building. Sure, it's an annex of Amazon, probably. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it is. Of course it is. Yeah. yeah. Why, yeah. Would, yeah. Why, would, yeah. Why, would Why would it be the exception? I think where we are right now is like the last vestige of Seattle that is not owned by Amazon. Right. Not the right. 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 right, it's a palace. Yeah. This is one of them. It's owned by John Bennett. <laughs> <laughs> I'm parked in his lot. I know. Yeah. But you know, you were asking, how did we come up with a sketch? Yeah, what was our method? So, like, we would work Tuesday through Saturday. And we would come in on Tuesday and watch the Larry Sanders, Sanders or Larry Sanders. Larry Sanders. That's yeah. right. And then we would sit down and we would critique the previous Saturday show and go through about what, you know, we'd watch it together and comment on various things. And well, then, that sucked. That was pretty And then, good. well, Bill, you, you can take it from now, here. Was this I don't think that happened. Half hour show? It was part? always half hour. Yeah. It was always half hour. It was an hour for the first five years. But so once John took yeah. it over as host, it was well, yeah, don't forget. Well, we had one, one more year being an hour. We were in, yeah. When we first started, we were an so hour long, Sundays at 6 p.m., which is the ideal time for comedy. Yeah. They used to. You know, Sunday at 6, everybody feels funny. Yeah. But it was when we went to a half an hour and then moved to the Saturday 11.30 time slot that we really hit our stride and figured out who we were as a, as a TV yeah. show. Yeah. Which I think, that is actually a great story, is how it became the yeah, late night it half is. hour. Uh, it, started, it started as a, uh, David Letterman had, had premiered. During and, the summer, right? Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and the idea was, let's do a local David Letterman show. So we had a band, we hired a band, mm -hmm. and we had a host, we, had, we hired Ross, and yeah. then we did a, a show that exactly mimicked the Letterman show, which mimics the Carson show, it's just a formula that's right. there. Right. And then from there, it stayed that way for, I don't Five know. Five years. Yeah, 
And it was an hour, Sunday at 6, and I believe it, they called that the TV ghetto. It's like nobody watched. And then, and then Ross but jumped which, which, away. Which I did. Well, that actually, turned out to be, that actually turned out to be a blessing because we could, basically, we could suck for a few years. Yeah, yeah and because, true. Because nobody cared, so we could kind of figure out how to do this thing. Mm. You couldn't do that now. Now you've got to come out of the gate running. So you guys had training wheels. Basically, yeah. 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 You just don't know how to do this. I mean, the show was on the air, what, 15 years? But well, so, 15 yeah, years. But so yeah. so that going from, from that to the half hour, that to me is a really cool thing. How Because that, that's kind of almost weirdly random how right. that happened. Ross, yeah. Ross got a deal where he went to do The Late Show, which right. is the former um, Joan, uh, River Joan River Show. show and mm. so he left. And so we were left with this vacuum. And we needed a host. And they went through five different hosts uh, that were considered and finally decided on John. Mm -hmm. And we did the show just like we had done it with Ross. Uh, For John, one season. John was the yeah. host, and he right. did the interviews. Yeah, I remember and, that. And he sucked at that, kind of, sort of. It's a <laughs> let, let sugar coated, Steve. My so, God. Yeah, well, wow, definitely. But, but, I will say. How many of those have you had? So no, far? But, but let me just say, the best part of it was the, the, the sketches that we did. And so. Our, our program director, you know, we went, we, it was like, okay, was a lot how do we save this? You know, like this, and he's the one that said, okay, we're gonna push, this one Saturday Night Live sucked. Saturday Night Live really sucked. this is not right. Not right. This is no. after Eddie no, Murphy. No, that is not on. It's close. First of all, let me add a little what nuance. Okay. Let, me, let me add a little nuance, because John gets unfairly, you know, critiqued for that. No, no, season five was a terrible <laughs> season. But it was because, yeah. um, and, and this is my fault, because I was the producer, I basically forced John into a show that had been designed around Ross's strengths. Yeah, totally and different. Ross and John have completely different comedic sensibilities. Right, They're like yin and yang, and we were forcing John to do something. <laughs> and, and so when we finally came up with like, during the summer break, it's like, how do we fix this? What's the stuff that we can really do well? Uh, and what, what really happened, we realized well, we're really good at the comedy. The, the thing that we couldn't have predicted that was just, ideal at the time yeah. was that that was exactly, I don't know if you remember when, when, the, when, when Carson left and there was the Letterman Leno Wars yes. going on yeah. mm -hmm. and a lot, and we were an NBC affiliate mm -hmm. and the NBC, NBC affiliates around the country were getting really antsy about this and oh, they yeah. were all threatening to leave. So NBC was doing anything they could to keep their major affiliates happy and we're the number 12 market, we're a major affiliate. Mm -hmm. And so we said what will keep us happy is give us the 1130 time slot. For what? For three? For a couple specials? Something like that. In August. Now, Lauren Michaels is incredibly protective of that 11:30 <laughs> time slot, so he was not happy. But we were the only market in the country that was allowed to do that, mostly because if it hadn't been for the whole Letterman Leno thing, that wouldn't have happened. So also we had this great the planets aligned that we had John, who was who turned out to be a brilliant host when he was put in a show that revolved around his strengths. And we had a time slot that worked for us at a time, um, uh, you know, a half hour instead of an hour that worked for us. And that's, that's when the show really so, And that was really like, an, like a, a summer, in, an August summer, three shows, I think, or three weeks. And then the, the sales went, wait a minute, this is actually going pretty well. Yeah. We're going to let, and then and since uh, King had some, um, uh, some power at that point, they said, we want to hold on to this time slot. Yeah. And NBC right. Major said, Okay, and so that's how you got the half hour late night, which is right. astonishing. There's, well, there's one, there's one thing you're missing in this, yeah. and that is that Eric Bremner yeah. was the president. Eric Bremner, our, 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 our the president our, of King president TV, King TV okay. yeah. was the president of the NBC affiliate, so he had a lot of power with yeah. NBC. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. And also, there was a weird timing thing, which was they, NBC gave us I, uh, three months. Yeah. They, gave, they, they like said that. they would reevaluate it right. in three months. Right. So, okay. right. so we had three months to do it, and then right as three months uh, expired, there's the there was the annual convention mm. uh, for the annual television convention, oh, right. and uh, mm. we won the award for the best local show in the United States, and the oh, NBC yeah. the NBC people were involved. Thank you. Thank you. This is actually this is very funny. So they sent a telegram, and they, which said, a telegram? "Looks like telegraph." Yes, <laughs> they, said, uh, they, they sent a raven. They, no, they, they did. Raven. They, they, they did. did. Yeah, they did. No, it was it was, okay, it was so a telegram. Okay, a telegram. Okay, a telegram. Yeah. Yeah. It was before the, it was before did the they, internet. Okay. They, they sent a telegram. <laughs> That said, looks like you made the right decision wow. with, with this, and so let's just keep it. And so they did. But that, you know, 
uh, that was the congratulations we got for winning the uh, best local wow. show in the United States. Not from the station, right? Oh. But from right. NBC. Oh. And then, right. and then once we got hooked up with Comedy Central, when we would win, we would get bouquets from Comedy Central. But nothing right. from the, right. the, yeah. the right. station. Nothing. <laughs> nothing at King. Never. By the Never. way, that award he's talking about. Yeah. Okay. By the way, yeah. that award he's talking about. Yeah. We ended up winning. I think it was a total of twelve times. Uh, they don't give the award anymore. Twelve times. Our next nearest. We, we, we hold. We hold the record for that. The next nearest one won it three times. Yeah. yeah. So right. we, we did okay. Wait. The, right. Emmys did the show win total? No. Oh, over over a hundred total. Eight okay. billion. Yeah. No, eight billion. Eight billion. Eight billion. Eight, eight billion. billion. Well, billion. billion. And also, uh, uh, McDonald's and we we're, we're neck and neck. But also, Wilson and I can attest to that. Uh, before the show won the greatest show, we won the same award for the best segment on a show, which was for Alien Gumbies. Right. Oh, that, yeah. That bit. Yeah. And Steve and I were in New Orleans to pick that one up, and yeah. we were handed Oprah Winfrey, who was who was brand new on TV, oh my God. gave us that oh, award, yeah. and that's when we christened the drink that is mine is the full bottle of uh, Stolichnaya. Yeah, yeah anyway, that's, if you want that's, that's my signature, signature drink, drink. It's not good. a bottle, a full, yeah. full, full <laughs> bottle of Stoli. Full bottle of Stoli. Yeah, yeah. Give me a keister. Okay. <laughs> followed by okay. eight, eight keister. followed by eight hurricanes. Gonna, <laughs> uh, I was the first I've heard of it. If you're yeah. going to a broadcast convention, you want to do it in New Orleans. That's yeah. yeah. Yes. Wow, wow. We stayed well, at the Royal Sinesta Sin Royal Sin 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 Hotel, yeah. which you could walk on your elbows back to the. Yeah, to, to, yeah to, we had to uh, stay on Bourbon Street because all the all the conventions were outside, and so we we got our last. When they sent us like, okay, you guys can go, and they, the the only night hotel was the nicest one. So wow, yeah. it nice. Fun. It was a former convent. Get out of here! I'm not kidding. No, no it was a convent. say former. Yeah. And it was it had all this know, yeah. anyway. So we right. got great. Well, we could have good track. stories like we the voodoo stuff. Yeah. Yeah. No, I wasn't there yet. No, yeah. I wasn't there yet. Yeah, no, we went to the voodoo museum and Steve freaked out. This oh, is what? evil. <laughs> this is evil. We gotta get out of here. We have to get out of here. We have to get out of here. Yeah, well do you remember walking down the streets like in, in, in the middle of nothing and all these doors are like, where are we? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Wow. Well, actually, and just speaking of walking down the street, once we were on Comedy Central, which we could get into, but they only had, they didn't have a West Coast uh, office in those days. They, they, it was in New York, the Viacom offices were. And so I, I'd have, I, to go to a meeting there, I'm walking down in Manhattan. And we, we didn't even get the show. I don't think, I, we, I couldn't get it at my house, you know, Comedy Central in those days. It was the pre-South Park days. Right. But you could get it all over Manhattan and in the south, for some reason, the southeast of the United States. But anyway, I'd be, I'd, I'd be walking down Manhattan, I'd be, it'd be like, hey, hey, you, you're on that show. You know, you're on that show. What is Ballard? What the hell? You know, like, <laughs> what is that? Everybody, Brooklyn, what's Ballard over yeah, here? Yeah, everybody, everybody watches the show. We don't know what you're talking about. You know, it's like everybody watches it, but we don't know what you're talking about. And, <laughs> and then I'd be, hey, this is that guy. And like, yeah, hey, guys. Well, you remember when, when, when Kim yeah. Thiel came to visit? Kim Thiel, the lead guitarist for Soundgarden. Right. Yeah. So he was on the lame list. Yep. Yeah. He, was, he was one of our you know, stock guys for the lame list. And uh, <laughs> Soundgarden blew up along with Nirvana and Pearl Jam. You know, they're the biggest bands in the world. Um, and uh, they did like their first big tour. And Kim Thaw was like, I'm the lead guitarist for the, you know, one of the biggest bands in the world. And he came back and he was just so angry. He came back and he told us, I'm getting recognized more for being on the damn lame list than I am for being on the lame list. Yeah. Now the power of almost lame. Yeah, I went into yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. that's what it is, yes. the power of almost I, I went into the Carnegie yeah. Deli when I was in New York, and the guy said, all right, I was hoping that you'd come in here. I love your show, man. I love kids in the hall. You went, yeah, good. Yeah, good. You don't so, even have a, a, so I had a they, 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 they took a shot. Of me and put it up, you know, John. Kids in the hall. Kids in the hall. <laughs> okay. Right. So, kid, so we were the lead-in for Kids in the Hall yes. for like two and yes. a half years. On, yeah. on Comedy Central. On yeah. Comedy Central, we were, right. we were the lead-in for Kids in the Hall, and like a year and a half, two years into the run, <laughs> yes. 
kids in the hall were doing a tour, and they were going to come to Seattle. <laughs> and the promoter said, oh, it would be really good. We'll get, we got the almost live people to introduce oh, yeah. them. God. And it was like at the Moore or something like that. Yeah, like, oh, this more. is going to be cool because we're going to be friends. Right. And gonna so, know so, so we're downstairs. You know, the green room is downstairs, with the, and, and we get there first because, you know, we didn't have to come from as far as they did. Um, so we're down there, and it's being very cool. And the kids, you know, they come in, and, we, and you know, we know that. They didn't have a clue who we were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No idea. What? Like, wait, didn't no. you ever tune in early? We've been your lead in for the past. Nope, no Who's idea. Who's your publicity guy? No. You didn't yeah. tell him nothing? Yeah. Well, some people's kids. Clearly, yeah, clearly. Well, he missed, felt, missed he missed felt the, the cracks. Yeah. But it was fun when we walked out on stage, people went insane for us. Did right. they? Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. they all came out. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then the kids all were who are you guys? Wait, who are you? Yeah. 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 Too late for that. Too yeah. late for yeah. that. You had your chance. Yeah, yeah. 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 You're on our territory <laughs> now, kids. Oh, what you can't yeah. 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 who are those guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, this is good. Well, I will tell you that uh, a, a really weird, a strange footnote. No, when, uh, uh, oh, oh, we're going to hate this. No, but when, uh, when Ross uh, went to Los Angeles, uh, he... Uh, uh, got yes, he took over for Joan Rivers, and there was a lot. I met a lot of people on that show. Uh, I went down there for a couple of weeks and worked on it before, while everybody was trying to figure out what we we're going to do with the show. And it was all, everything was still in place. And Ross oh, had yeah. oh, all of Joan Rivers stuff, you mean? Yeah, and I had her off. I had her office because her office was the small office. It was very feminine, very pretty. It was a real pretty office, all pink and nice. And outside was the Hollywood sign, and I was like. This is so great. And Ross had Edgar, uh, her, her wife, yeah, her husband, uh, her husband. Yeah. Her husband. <laughs> yeah. No one's keeping track it was, anymore. It was an interesting it was time. Big, you know, thing. And and uh, when it came in, and they had just had this really big, um, you know, blow up. Obviously, Johnny and 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 John Rivers. That no one really knows what was said exactly. Yeah. But you know, I mean, he felt really betrayed, and so he sent a letter to Ross. Uh, and uh, when I got there, and I was, he was like, no, this will be your office, and come in. And I was like, Gee, look at this place. And he goes, John, look, I got a letter from uh, Johnny Carson. And I was like, get out of here. Really? And they said, let me see it. And he goes, and I, and I, yeah, it just came this morning. And, I, and it said, dear Ross, you know, hey, it's you know, nice, to, nice to have you on the block. I think pretty soon we're all going to be working for Rupert Murdoch. You know, best wishes, Johnny Carson. Wow. And I was like, wow. Like, you know, he's, you know, like, this is a real, a real yeah, thing. Yeah, that's God. Yeah, it was, re wow. it was, it was yeah. really, really exciting. And then he told me later that he thought, you know, he, Ross got a boat down at Marina Del yeah. Mar right. Mar Marina right. Story. And uh, yeah. he, because uh, I was like, oh, boy, this is like big shots. And we're riding around in limos and everything. And, blah, blah, blah. and so Ross like, hey, there's Johnny on his boat. And he sent me a letter. Uh-oh. He would uh -oh. Be, uh -oh. We're probably friends. <gasps> yeah. Ooh, no, no, you're not. <laughs> yeah. Johnny was Johnny was like Johnny was reading the paper. No. Yeah. Oh wow. And uh, so I he, see where this is going. Yeah. And so he's like, Johnny, it's right. And he picked up his chair, turned <laughs> and sat, and just sat down, just like you know, just okay. turned. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. You know, but so. Uh, yeah, it was, uh, and, and people will say, Oh, that's yeah. yeah, he yeah. also got kicked out of Letterman's house once. <laughs> <What>? Yes, <laughs> you got kicked out of Letterman's house. No, no, Ross did. Yeah. He was there with yeah. George Miller and George, he who, who was a comedian. Yeah. yeah, and Miller said, hey, let's, let's go to Letterman's house. So they did, and it was all that good. And then <laughs> Ross, right, it was snowing, and Ross couldn't figure out where to park. And eventually, Letterman came out and said, Just, just put it anywhere, Ross. And so they're, they're sitting there, just you know, they just they dropped in on David Letterman. Oh, and after about a half hour, they said, well, I think it's about time you guys leave. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, a lot of people say, uh, you know, when the show went on and did really well, uh, I bet, I bet he's really sad he didn't stay with no. the show. But what people don't understand is that he had this really great career. Totally. You know, went yeah. on to many shows, and it was really exciting and a lot of fun. And he would, yeah. he was a very, very. I mean, we played as if we were rivals on the show, but he was always a very good friend to me. And very supportive. And I would argue that had Ross stayed, the show probably wouldn't have lasted more than a few years. Yeah. Right. Now, and, 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 Ross, Ross is a great friend. Ross, Ross was a great host. Uh, without him, the show never would have gotten off. No, the air. never would have gotten. Wouldn't off have happened. But the show really came into its own when it started to circle around John's persona yeah. and John's sensibility. Half hour sketch, mm. sketch comedy. Yeah. 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 Now, yeah. who decided um, to keep the focus on local Northwest mm. topics? Because I know that's 
what yeah. everybody thinks of. Yeah. Is that, a, is that a good idea? That's kind of a tough that one. Be, the reason, <laughs> I think it was just sort of a general, yeah. I, I think, but the, the I reason. Was Stein. Yeah, I yeah, think that's <laughs> probably oh, it. Oh, but uh, ouch. the reason was that we would do, we would, well, first of all, we, we learned that we had to save our jokes until the day of the show because if you would hear a joke and you'd laugh at it and then you'd hear it a second time, right. it was wasn't funny. funny. Yeah. So we would write all the jokes yeah. and then re reveal them the day of the show. And uh, if we wrote national jokes, the, 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 we were writing the same jokes as it would appear on the, right. the, 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 the Carson. Carson. Yeah. Yeah. Carson. Yeah. 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 I mean, they, yeah. there's kind of a logic to the way the jokes would go. And so, if, so we just concentrated on what the local news was. And also, look, this is a great opportunity to bring up Bob Nelson. Oh, who yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, yeah and, he's, and everyone he's, wrote to. He's doing to, some time. Now. He's doing some yeah. time. He's doing some time. But he, he um, would consolidate all of the um, like news stories out of the newspapers and. Um, and, and newspapers, newspapers were, were, yeah, they were a print medium, um, and they, and then he would give us all these like headlines, but we would all write to the local, uh, local stuff, what was going on, you know, kind of politically or kind of in, in the in the community. But but Bob had a great eye, a great ear for that kind of a thing. He, did. he yeah. really knew how to write. He knew how to write a joke really, really well. Yeah. Plus, also that was that was our strength, as we found out, yeah. especially when we were on yeah. Comedy Central, that our strength yeah. was being local. People used to always say to us. You know, you guys are better than Saturday Night Live. It's like, no. Which isn't necessarily true. It's not true. But, uh, I mean, yes, it was for a no. certain Well, so half, half, hour, half hour show versus half yeah. an hour and a half. Yeah. I yeah. always say that. But, 90 you know, some, minutes, some, 30 minutes. Some weeks we were funnier, some weeks we weren't. Yeah. But what we did have that they couldn't have was we were local. Yeah. So it's interesting. You can make, okay, let's say jokes go from like a one to a ten. One is a terrible joke, ten is the best joke ever written. Yeah. So you can write a, and a nine generic joke and a six local joke, and the six local joke will get as, as many laughs because it's about where we are. Yeah. Like, we can make jokes about Microsoft when nobody else knew what Microsoft was. Yeah. We can make jokes about Fremont and Ballard and that, mm -hmm. and they come across as funnier. Let's not forget Issaquah. But, I mean, no, I mean, I, I would say, no, but I would and say, Issaquah. I would say that we, de we defined, up until that time, Seattle was Seattle, and it was like a little sleep. We, as a show, define yeah. the areas. We Bel did. Bellevue were the rich yeah. jokes, and yeah. Linwood were the hick Let's jokes. Let's not forget and snob. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, it's, and it's because comedy deals in, for better or for worse, it deals in stereotypes. Yeah. But in order for a stereotype to work, there has to be a grain of truth to it. Oh, Capitol Hill is gay. Ballard is old and Scandinavian and slow. And this, mm -hmm. Fremont's gay. Uh, yes. <laughs> right. Well, it's you know, true. I mean, well, well, okay. but, but, but but now here's the thing. As, as we got, on, as it got to be like season 15, you know, towards the end, that was getting tougher and tougher because those old stereotypes were no yeah. longer true because there was this homogenization. Yes. All of a sudden, Ballard and Fremont are the same place. And Capital, I mean, there's they're still a vestige in there. Yeah. But a lot of times there's we were- There's still ghosts floating around there. Yeah. And yeah. that's what we ended up writing oh, jokes about, the ghosts. So like people <laughs> new to Seattle were like, that's not my experience. Whereas the old timers are still remembering the ghosts and, you know, yeah. But I remember when, when we did uh, Comedy Central, they said, You're, we're going to put you guys on. And I, I correct me if I'm wrong, we said, look. Oh, I will. <laughs> okay. So look, I mean, uh, we do, you know, we have Ballard, and we have these, they have Ballard and these jokes, and these are, they said, no, 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 everybody's got those neighborhoods. The only thing they wouldn't let us do was Bellevue, because back east, Bellevue means. Oh, the hospital. Oh, right. great, uh, it's a great crazy hospital. hospital. Yeah. So we could uh, not use City, the yeah. term Bellevue, no, but we could funny. use Ballard right. and Linwood and all these It's things. interesting, like in Ballard, so there's the Ballard exactly. Driving Academy, which is one of our, our, our better yeah. sketches. Yeah. Really? And, uh, and when Tom that aired, John, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that was, so when it aired nationally, all the old slow jokes worked because everybody, you know, knows yeah. about getting behind an old, you know, slow drive yeah. with the alert turn signal on. There, yeah. Q-tip. But the ending of the of the bit was slapping on a bumper sticker that said "Oofda." Yes. Well, yeah. that that didn't make it nationally. It means like they didn't get that at all. No, of course yeah. they didn't get it. What we uh, found was that we'd have to have John do a little monologue before the before oh, some right. of the sketches explaining. Oh. Because, for example, Kent, I mean, we know what Kent is and isn't. Um, Don't uh, live there. But, yeah. 
But to the rest of the country, they thought, well, Kent, that's England. And every place in England, as Alan will tell you, every place in England is gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, it's like, we don't get it. And the girl with the dragon tattoo had not aired yet. So, right. Uh, so you, there is a, there is a uh, scene in there where somebody goes, oh, fuck. And it goes, uh, or no, it goes, oof da. And they, it goes, oh, fuck. <laughs> so that's what, that's what I was like, oh, okay. Oh, okay. That's what it means. Oof da. Oof da, Dan. How long was time? Five minutes. Oh. We're only five minutes. Oh. That's two questions. We're only five minutes into it? That's amazing. That's why I time the show every week. What was the question? What was the thing you wanted? Hey, hush up. I'm sorry. You can talk and not stop if somebody hasn't been able to talk all the Wow, night. you're sick. You're supposed to be sick. Yeah, and then by the way, thanks for warning us. I believe at the very beginning he said, Julie, you're going to be doing most of the talk. I know. I shook his hand for God's sake. Yeah, we should. Yeah. Well, the, what we did last any, time yeah. was we asked our guests and our audience if we if they were open to possibly extending a few extra moments, if you guys are uh, open. Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I got, I got, I got a thing. I got to go. I got a thing. I've got very important I, things wait, to I have do. to ask my oh, wife. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta ask the wife. Is it okay? Can I stay late? <laughs> Julie, let him stay Julie. late. Come on, Julie. Come on. Come on. Okay, she says it's okay. Uh, this, is a, this is a really good use of the time right here. Right, right, God. Yeah. Okay, what circle you? breather boy. Okay, let, let Julie ask a Julie. question. Do Where do I have it? Sh Julie. All righty. So Better one of the good. questions that we've also, uh, a variety of people asked is, if you guys were still on the air, still doing your show. We are. <laughs> well, wait. No, the we're not doing it anymore. It's just on the air. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're still doing it now. What are the things that you would be observing with Seattle nowadays? It's a little bit different than 20 years ago. Is there something that... 20 years. Yeah, uh-huh. There would be a segment oh. called Ask a Third Avenue Crackhead. That would be... Yeah. Yeah, that would be... Right. That'd be... The new lame list in the question would be like, you know, what's your favorite day of the month? And they'd be like, well, I'd just say, spiders! You know, and it'd be like that. So. <laughs> And so then uh, we'd have that, and then we'd well, obviously, have. Uh, then we'd have why is there a trolley? You know why does the the, why is there a trolley? Yeah. We'd have yeah. a thing. Oh, why yeah. is there a trolley yeah. when the, it's the, on the same the grade? The six hundred foot trolley. Yeah. Why is there a trolley? Yeah. yeah. And uh, that goes like. Yeah. God, there there is. I mean, we have a lot. woman's place. We'd have like interstitials of Amazon talk yeah. or, you know. I mean, there, there's been many times during during the last 20 years or whatever it's been oh, since yes. we've been up, we've said, oh God, if only we had, if, if only, only we had. Yes. Like I'm sure when the, when the uh, South Lake Union transit came out, you guys are probably dying. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. With, yeah. With the oh, yeah. And yeah. the whole Amazon thing, I mean, everything. But the city has changed so dramatically. The neighborhoods are no longer what they were. Right. You know, you can't, yeah. you can't stereotype them in, in the same way. Do you so. think that comedy has changed quite a bit as well in terms of sketch comedy? I uh, do. Yeah, I do. Thank you very uh, much. Yeah, I think that uh, since uh, the biggest, no biggest change I've noticed is that there's a real premium on reality. That comedy, uh, that we were doing written, very heavily, you know, written stuff that we, you know, we improv a little bit, but yeah, there good. needs to be uh, uh, the most popular, the most, the most, the comedy that, that uh, it seems to have an element of reality to it. Like, you know, they come up with some premise and go out and screw with people on the street. And mm -hmm. That's what everybody watches on YouTube but and stuff. Do you really think so? I mean, there's. I do, yeah. yeah I'm not really, sure about that. I don't. I mean, I think comedy is comedy. I would say there's a lot of like stand-up I, I watch on Netflix. Oh, there's Netflix a lot. Of not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or SNL still has some good, some well, good. Well, I think I think, no, I think, I think that's true. Yeah. I think that that's SNL SNL to me is really quaint because there's no other show like it. It's an institution. It does sketch comedy, yeah. a beginning, middle, end in an apartment or something. Right. There's right. no right. other show that right. does that. Right. Nothing. Right. Um, yeah. There's a. I think there's a lot more really interesting stand-up that's mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a lot of great stand-up. Certainly, um, mm -hmm. a much broader spectrum of people doing mm -hmm. mm -hmm. stand-up. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. But yeah, do you think that's regional, or do you think it's I think it's across the board. Across the yeah. board. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fact that we were pre internet mm -hmm. and yeah. that is the greatest gift we ever oh, got. No yeah. kidding. That we yeah. could we yeah. put the show out and you could you, you tape it, obviously. Yeah. But you couldn't 
break it down and put out these little you know pieces on, right. on. and so you had to watch it in its entirety and I think that we yeah I, I think that that was a, that's a huge difference in terms of like seeing yeah. things in a, in a context but also, yeah. also the monetary I mean basically when we were working in TV there were three stations four right. stations right. and there was a, you know, a lot of money in it now it's oh, yeah. decimated and you have your phone every kid can make a YouTube video and sure. it gets viral so I look at some of this stuff and I go geez that's really funny I yeah. remember yeah. paying for my house Writing stuff like that once a week, so or yeah. performing in it, so it's like that. Those days are gone. So yeah. when you say, "Could yeah. this show be done today?" There's no way no, this show no, could no, be no, done today. Be. I mean, no, you know, look at couldn't. local TV today. Yeah. And they're and they're all. It's not. There's no um, private ownership of the of the stations anymore. So there's no commitment to the local thing. These are uh, all owned by yeah, local, corporate. Yeah. Local, 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 yeah. They local, don't care. Local. And I, they, it's not really a judgment call. It's just that's just the way it that's is. That's yeah. just the yeah. way yeah. it is. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, it was, uh, you, you know, people, you, you look back, there was a guy, there was Colin Powell's son, Michael Powell, mm -hmm. uh, is one of the, one of the uh, worst government officials in the history, in the, in, 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 in the last 50 years, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, we don't talk about government stuff, but I have to agree with you personally. Yes. Um, he, yeah, he was yeah. the one who deregulated the... Uh, the, the oh, right. He's like, well, That's we have the internet, so everyone has access, so right. let's let Rupert Murdoch own all the local state. Let's let let's let three people own all the local stations. Which is right. hilarious. In, in America, mm -hmm. you know, like, uh, yeah, you know, we can Huge do that. Mistake. He Huge. just He just undid all the regulations, you know. That was nice of him. Well, you know, and, I mean, I, I just... You used to only be able to have four stations. You couldn't own a newspaper and a television station in the mm -hmm. same town. Yeah. I mean, those were good rules. Those, are good rules. Yeah. those were yeah. really good rules. You know? Julie, so ask us a happy one. question. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I have a happy question. I've been asking happy questions. You have. Okay, let's ask and we veer. Oh, oh, which? What are you talking about? Okay. What question? Is there something in the past twenty years that you guys can think back and you think, man, we should have done a bit on this? Well, when we were still on the air. You mean when we were still on? The week, the first, the first, we got canceled like two weeks before, and, and it was in '99, right. and yeah. WTO was like the next week. Oh right, oh, okay. Battle Seattle. It's weird. I, I thought about that a lot. In fact, I was, I was, um, I actually was talking with uh, Norm Stamper a couple of weeks ago, who was the police chief at the time. Yeah, so yeah, there, yeah. There, there were the riots. Yeah, he left his gun in the car and he got robbed. Yeah, uh, I, I don't remember. Maybe. But yeah, but, but I, yeah, that, that's, that, that's really true, Steve. That's, that's, that's the one thing, because we realized that um, the WTO riots were very divisive. I mean, the city was completely, did, did the police do the right thing, did they not do the right thing? But the cool thing was, nobody died, so it was fair game for comedy. That makes it See, the rule is, if somebody dies, you can't make a joke about right. it. Mm. But nobody died, and we were no longer on the air. And that's why I thought we really could have provided a service, because... We would have made fun of both sides, yeah. mm -hmm. and I'm not saying we could have solved the problem, but we could have helped create a context where both sides are laughing at the same thing. It was a comedy-rich target environment. It was oh, a comedy-rich okay. target, but we actually could have provided a service, too. And that's, look, that's not why we went into the business. I'm not going to try and be overly altruistic, but it would have been a really cool thing to be able to mm -hmm. help that situation. I think we could have. Or made it worse. Either way, it would have been terrible. <laughs> if someone here, one of us died tonight, could one of us, could we make jokes about it? Ooh, oh, we have to. I we hope, have to. I hope it's Bill. Didn't that hurt? We have to. 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 No, I remember when, 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 when yeah. Monty Python, when Graham Chapman died, <laughs> And they had a reunion, and they brought out this urn, which yeah. was supposedly his ashes. Yeah. And then they like knocked it over and something like that. So yes, I would, I would, I assume, I, yeah, I, I would hope we would do yeah. that. Yeah. Of course, yeah. wow. absolutely. Yeah. Now, yeah. Here's, yeah. What was? I'm just going to ask this because everybody asks because everybody has their favorite sketch yes. or character to yeah. develop. Yeah. Do you guys have something that you just was just your personal favorite, something you really enjoyed working on, as, as a group even? Mm. Mm -hmm. Well. Everybody gets quiet. Well, you know, think about right. it. You one thing I, I, I didn't care for most of it. One thing uh, <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. we almost we almost <laughs> we almost never got good suggestions from people. Oh, outside. Yeah, yeah. We almost never almost did, never. but every once in a while we you, did. The public, <laughs> and um, <laughs> and we got one with Green River Dance, which yes. I thought yeah. we all we all participated <laughs> in. Oh, awesome. Yeah. And awesome. I thought I thought that was a really really funny. That, sounds that, that was a really yeah. funny. That joke. was a good one. I yes. do not remember that. One. It was really great. Right. We'll it was quite and, wonderful. Uh, yes, we'll, I will. Big, big Jim. Yeah. 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 
God, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard to. It is. I mean, it's like so picking your favorite child. It really yeah. is hard. From, you know. Well, I did. A, I did a show a few uh, weeks ago where a guy said uh, he, he's well. You know, it was my favorite bit was, and um, I was waiting him for to say ballad driver and Kenley or right. Michael. But he was like drunken Protestant. Oh, I love that. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I was like, that was I was a great. Like, I love drunken Protestant. That was a great bit. Yeah. I was he's like, yeah. drunk and Protestant. He ties ten percent and is an alcoholic. His name is Drunken Protestant Man. He helps widows and orphans and drinks his lunch each day. His name is Drunken Protestant Man. His name is Drunken Protestant Man. It's been 20 years oh since you've heard that. Yeah. Totally yeah. forgot about that. No, yeah. like Several of these where we they do a bit, and like I go, Nancy would say, "Hey, I've got the lyrics," and then we'd run in and we'd find a, like a piece of generic music, music, and right. I'd say, "Hey, this will work," yeah. and so we would like yeah. put it on and we'd sing it. We yeah. sang, we, we sang, sang it one. Yeah. And John was perfect at that. Oh. Drunken Protestant. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Drunk yeah. Yeah. That was a good. Bit. Well, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Was I so had to really. Yeah. Yeah. I had to really. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I'm pretty wasted, but yeah, I guess I. It's quite a stretch for it this. Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but a lot of those, a lot of those things had a song. Worst girlfriend in the world. You yeah. sing this song. Great. Yeah. That's right. You know, Great. I, mean, yeah. well, I remember John came in. That was my first year on the show, and he was so sweet. He was like, "Well, you know, the show could disappear any time." And I always wanted everybody who was on the show to leave with a good reel. Yeah. So what would you? What would you? You know, I'd like to help write some characters that you'd like to play and that kind of thing. So he, he'd come up with this combination of female that was a good friend of his, his girlfriend <laughs> and possibly yes. someone from his past as well I'm, I'm not sure about that but he came to the he came to the table our pitch that's it we would on Tuesdays we would have pitch sessions and he hadn't scripted it, but I remember he wrote the theme song, and that's how the worst girlfriend right. started. Yeah. Yes. and that was so great, and I'm yeah. so I'm so grateful for that. Yes. <laughs> really, based on a girlfriend of a friend of mine who, uh, he kept coming to lunch saying all these new sexual escapades that they were doing, but he but he was injured, like slightly, <laughs> he was like, he was like slightly injured. And then, and then we'd have lunch the next week, and he'd be telling you know more stuff, and then he'd he'd have like a long uh, like a cast, of it. <laughs> and then and then the next week he'd tell something, and then we'd walk to his car, and we'd find his dashboard is all like dead. And, uh, what is what's what happened there? And, oh, she kicked, she got mad. And, kicked and so we said, you know, man, next week you're, you're, gonna be, you're gonna be you're gonna be oh, yeah. you're gonna be driving one of those rascals around, you know, and you know, and, uh, and uh, you know. And so, yeah, they, they broke yeah. up and, yeah. but the and sex never was really saw good. each other. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, and her name was Jill. Jill. Well, her yeah. name was Jill, so. Yeah. 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 Wow. so. Wow. That's a showstopper. Yeah, apparently so. <laughs> what? Julie's? Well, no, no, we're not. No! We're not. Brian, we're not. No. Brian, we're not. Okay, all right. Not. You know what? You just need to shut up. <laughs> wow. Uh, what about you talking like to the man? Go, oh, you go, girl. Put the gun to my head. Uh, <laughs> No, 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 no. Uh, the last thing that we need to say before we get off the air is I want to know what you guys are doing right now. Mm, what are your projects? Know. Are you guys working on anything? Mm. You want to go around the table? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you should. Yeah, go ahead. Nancy? Nancy? Well, so for the last, I don't know, 10 years or so, I've been... Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it's not funny. It's just like 10 years. So I know, isn't that kooky? It is kooky. Um, so I've been hosting a show called Art Zone, and it's about the local art scene. <laughs> That's nice. um, um, and, so, and so, yeah, so we uh, it's a half hour a week or every other week. Every other week. And I have a little mockingbird behind me on my right shoulder. And so it's from, and so we cover the local art scene. It's really, it's, it's a blast. In fact, we shoot at Georgetown Stables right yeah. down here. And I shot, we are shooting here there today. So it's, yeah, it's really fun. And it's, uh, what the, the great thing is, it's about supporting local artists of all genre. And it's, in, uh, fundamentally, it's about connection and meeting people and uh, being able to kind of highlight people and what they're doing artistically. So that's my thing. 
Me, uh, for the last <clears throat> 45 years, I've been the drummer for the progressive rock band, Yes. Sadly, that is not true. Uh, that was my dream, that didn't happen. Uh, that job was already taken. Uh, no, I'm, a, I'm, I'm actually a keynote speaker. I basically live on airplanes. I travel around the country and occasionally around the world talking about leadership and creativity, which are things I learned uh, on Almost Live. Yep, yeah. yep, very good. I am doing exactly what I have done all my life, which is a television director, producer, writer, that sort of thing, but I do mostly multi-cam directing. Uh, currently, uh, doing a, I do a lot of work. I work 10 hours today for Microsoft. I'll do it tomorrow again. Um, but um, there's just a lot of it. I call it factory television. It works out great. I've had some great opportunities over the years. I directed your show yep. for two yep. years, two yep. seasons, mm -hmm. I think. Yep. Two seasons. Yep. Until they and found somebody better. Yeah. That's right. Until they got a better yeah. person. Until yeah. yeah. they, they decided to go in a different direction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. But look, yeah, I want to say something about Steve. Steve Wilson is the greatest live to tape TV director or live director. Nobody else can do it in this city and probably a lot of other places. And the reason why the show often looks so good is he knew exactly what he was doing. Truly, it's truly quite brilliant what Steve brought to it, and you wouldn't know it as an audience member, so you kind of consciously, but it was absolutely fundamentally there. So it was huge. It's true. Huge. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. No, it's true. He was, he was a director who also had a comedic sensibility. Yes. yes. So he would know when to cut and when to... And, yeah. and, yes. and that, that can make or break a laugh. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Um, I, I taught... Uh, 12 years at the Art Institute, script writing, which is hilarious to everybody <laughs> at this table because I never had a script. I, I, I had did. little pieces, well, I had little pieces of little paper. Little pieces but, of paper. But I'd be yelling Post at people, keep it the format and do the thing. You know, I'm like yelling at the people. <laughs> I would have graduated the Art Institute. Oh, well, good, you got out before. before. Yeah. Wow. All right, oh you, my you got out before it closed, wow. yeah. Very good year. So I, yeah, I resigned from that before the big, you know, looting occurred, you know, when the, uh, Hey, we're done, guys, and yeah, all the students the place, like yeah. yeah. So yeah, so uh, I'm uh, just uh, I'm just sitting in in, a, in the lawn, just staring in the middle distance now. And then, so, <laughs> oh. you know. The end is near. Is it yeah. That's yeah. right. You come over to my place. We're gonna have a good time. That's okay. Right. Yeah. We'll He's a man of leisure. Yeah. I'm a man of leisure. Yeah. <laughs> well, man. Leisure suits. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, that's quite an image, you in a leisure suit. <laughs> not a good one. Not a good one. Not Thanks for stealing that. That's good. Well, John, and we thank you for your service. Oh. Yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. Thank you. Oh, and I, I, along with Mr. Staten at the other end of the table, uh, I do keynote presentations about how not to drop dead because I did, and I don't, I don't, uh, I don't advise, do I don't advise people to do that if you can avoid it, and sometimes you can't avoid it. But yeah, I do programs all over the country, and when I'm lucky, actually outside of the country, a program called Drop Dead Gorgeous, and. Uh, really fortunate that all these people were there when I had my cardiac arrest in 1995 and I got shocked six times and finally got resuscitated and now I, I do programs about how to avoid having a cardiac event. And now you're here with Julia. Wow. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes. yes, indeed. Yes. Tracy, technically it was more than six times. They gave each of us a turn as well. They did, I don't really, I'm not sure you ever knew that. <laughs> Oh, Which yeah. end of this goes on the thing? Uh, <laughs> right. I don't know. But I love the fact that Tracy Conway, she literally died. I mean, she literally died and never missed a show. Yeah. Yeah. That's a profession. Yeah. That's a profession. Yeah. And the irony 
of dropping dead on a show called Almost Live. Uh -huh. right. Oh, right. Yeah. That is. It's right. so good. Yeah. 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 But you had the courtesy to wait till we faded to black. Yes, yes. I did. did. Yeah. It's did. well done. Yeah. That's right. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the only person who went to every episode. That was at every episode. Of wow! I think you are. I, 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 yeah, no, that's right. Because I was in the, yeah. I was in the, was the audience. audience. I was in the audience for the wow. uh, for the the, yeah. the, the, the pilot. Pilot, which I yeah. directed. So I actually was in. Every, I was wow. at every yeah. every okay, episode. Okay, that is quite wow. something. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, wow. so I guess. Yeah, that's yeah. a lot of shows. That's history. That's history right there. It's something yeah. that's really new. Yeah. Actually, I did miss one show. And that was in 1985. It was on Valentine's Day. I saw Prince at the Tacoma oh. Dome. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, were you there? <laughs> yeah, I was there. Yeah. Of, yeah, of the, course you were. The Purple Rain tour. Yeah. 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 I'm so jealous. We oh, have, did Prince do Purple Rain? I, okay. We yeah. have, we have uh, I just want to point out, Surf Dude and Donna, who are yeah. in the audience Surf, Surf constantly, constantly and almost live, and they, they, we adore them. You always brought us flowers, and we're so happy they're oh, here. Wonderful. They are yeah. serving yeah. them. Want to make sure you got a good seat. Yeah. And I just wanted to just say really quickly before we we uh, and, and I love Brian by the way. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't tell him to shut. Oh, I, he's my older brother, so I can yes. tell him to shut up. Okay, she can. But um, thank you guys so much. I wanted yeah. to just do my own little thing about. I, I've been dying to say this. Okay, so it's been since 1992. So I think 1992, spring of 92, there was the John report in May, I believe. And John was doing his report, and I was watching at home. And this was before Magic the Gathering came out. And I had been working on a production, uh, a stage production, up on, on Capitol Hill. And I'm watching the John report, and all of a sudden, our, um, our um, caption for our stage show splashes onto the back screen. And it's called 20-somethings. And John proceeds to destroy Oh! And, and I'm sitting there, and I'm watching, and I'm like, and okay, normal people, as they're watching the ship go down in flames, on the on the on almost live, would probably be horrified, but I'm not normal. I was so I sat there, and my husband's watching me, and I'm like this, and he's looking at me like, what's gonna happen? And I turned to him, and I went, oh my god. This is awesome. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I made it. I don't remember. I made it on the great. John report. I don't care what is happening here. I made it. I called my dad. I'm like, Dad, are you watching? Are you watching? He's destroying us. It's so great. And the reality was, it was a terrible production. Congratulations, John. Congratulations. Wow. No recollection whatsoever. Watching wow. him, and he was funny, and he was getting great laughs, and it was great. And I really, truly thought that that month that that was the best it was going to be for me. Like, I'm making it almost live. Nothing can get any better. And, and, and then Magic the it? Gathering came out. Oh, oh yeah. thank goodness for that. Yeah. But thank God. it truly really yeah. was. I was on Safe Cloud Nine yeah. for months after that. Oh, I love I was it. so excited. So I just wanted to say to John oh, and y'all, thank, thank you so okay. much. Right on. Just like the starfish, John, you can't save everyone, but you made a difference to that one. You made a difference, made a and difference. I, was, I seriously, it was the most exciting moment of my whole 22 years. Except wow. for this moment right wow. now. Except for this moment. And I'm waiting. We're living it now. Wow, you really so, have to aim higher. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you guys for so much. Iconic oh, TV, uh, things yeah. that, that when people think about Seattle, they have to think about it. One of, one of Almost Live sketches always yes. comes to mind. Always. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I'm talking over Brian. I know Brian has a few things to say, but I want to thank you. Brian, you got any last words? Brian. I have a whole bunch, but I'm going to save it for after hours. Ooh. Ooh. No, real. Ooh, there's an after, the after show. Uh, Almost yeah. live after dark. Do we keep, do we, do we yeah. keep recording after hours? Uh, I don't know. Uh, That's good. Okay. <laughs> I have a couple <laughs> stories, in them, but uh, we do have to close the show, Julie. I'm so glad we have this time yeah. together just to have a laugh and sing a song. Just
started and before you know it.